वन वीक फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन स्मार्ट सिटीज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग गवर्नमेंट इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज बिलासपुर आई एम ओवर जॉय टू टेक द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंट्रोड्यूस अवर रिसोर्स पर्सन ऑफ दिस सेशन डॉक्टर अलका भरत she is a professor in the department of architecture and planning in ma and it bhopal madhya pradesh she has a, her bachelor degree in architecture post graduate program in urban and rural planning and her phd in the area of region and the environment she has held the positions of uh, hod and dean of the institutes her areas of interest and specializations are physical planning architecture economics climate natural resources environment and human rights and she has uh, more than 60 presentations and 80 publications at national and international platforms she has contributed two chapters in many books she has guided more than 150 ug pg and phd scholars she is associated editor and a reviewer to few international journals she has many reputed uh, national and international citations to her work she is an expert advisory committee member keynote speaker mentor chairperson and a panelist at many national and international platforms she is india representative to commonwealth association of planners women wing her topic for today's session is smart city a concept and reality and without further ado i welcome dr alka bharat please ma'am you can proceed ma'am uh ma'am i think your mic is muted ah uh, thank you so much uh, is my screen visible ah uh, yes ma'am okay yeah okay okay uh, so starting today's presentation on smart city a concept and reality what a time today because of technology we have to readjust our slot that was scheduled now this is where we stand and then we aspire for something where we want to go let's see let's see uh how is this distance to be paced by us for that we have few empirical concepts on our side those concepts with contextual understanding has been translated into few guidelines few expectations from a very formal setup that is very precisely a government the government has tried to translate few concepts which makes a city smart and let's see how those transferring of thoughts into certain guidelines is reaching to its reality there is one small photograph on the left side of my screen and uh, this is what is multiple expectations at different places from a particular settlement to start working as a smart city so let's see let's see what is a smart city empirically theoretically so my, i have structured my presentation uh, you will find something what a city is what a smart city concept is what are different visions through uh, which are to be uh, materialize or which are to be realized through smart systems and then a case i have selected a case of a place where i belong to that is bhopal so this is such a good 
statement which I have taken from Jan Gill. We shape cities and they shape us. And this carries each and everything that makes us concerned about cities. Whatever we do for cities, we get it back. That is whatever decision making is there or we have uh, decision support system which we create for cities is the one that supports us. Just taking a very small, a very small and very relevant example at this point. Uh, I suppose few of you belong to a place where let monsoon come and you are worried on the part that your particular city or town or maybe village will be submerged. Why it is so? One of the major reasons for it is bad planning interventions. Any layman can say there is no drain. Secondly, if there are drains, they are not working properly. That is, they are stuffed with uh, maybe soil, maybe uh, leaves or something like that. And lastly, very important, very important, whatever was the natural course of flow of water has got obstructed by our decisions, our means the professional decisions of having built structures maybe house, maybe shops, maybe industries, whatever it is. So when, when we try to intervene into the nature, we call it as anthropocenic activities, a human induced activities. When we try to get into conflict with the natural system, its ills are going to come back. Of late for last few years, we have also heard of lot many incidences, lot many in incidences of mud flow. What is it? We are disturbing the natural geology of mountains. We are disturbing the natural geology anywhere. Right. So that is that is what is coming back to us. So we shape cities and they shape us. So we have to be ready with it. Just just a very quick. Touching upon what a conventional city is and what are our efforts to make it smart. Now a particular any conventional city, it is an evolutionary structure. It keeps on evolving with a combination of built, unbuilt and some networks which connects it. Networks like road networks, networks like infrastructure networks in form of water supply, sewer and our communication X, Y, Z. Now this is this is what Primarily, any city can be defined as a composition of built, unbuilt and networks. Now, with this type of uh, evolutionary structure, uh, it starts growing on its own, own with certain decisions. There has to be certain social acceptability. Social acceptability by the people. There should be certain amount of economical viability. There should be uh, options for earning. There should be options for spending. There should be uh, substantial uh, possibilities of these two. There should be producer. There should be consumer. Producer does not mean agriculture producer or industri industrial activity always, but somewhere from where economy gets generated and where it gets consumed. So it's a it's a complete cycle. So within a city, it's it's not only a physical composition of this, but these aspects have to be primarily getting 
should get satisfied as social acceptability, economical viability, and finally resulting into a physical comfortability with all those additional dimensions of taking um, or giving importance to environment, energy, and lot many dimensions which are of late coming because of our interventions into a natural system or what we can call it as an interface between natural systems and human system which are creating disbalances. So what is a smart city idea? This is out of so many resources which are freely available on different platforms and with different literatures. I have just picked one uh, to have this understanding, the basic understanding that a smart city is a one that uses information and communication technology to improve its efficiency, operational efficiency, obviously, uh, improve its operational efficiency with the public, that is the efficiency between transferring of information uh, between uh, the public and provide a better government for services and citizen welfare. So we, we, could, we could take few important or we have a takeaways. A smart city has to have ICT to work for, work such that it improves upon efficiency and gives the opportunity to the government to provide a better service and citizen well, welfare based decisions. So this is how this gets into it. This is very basic idea of transferring this basic composition of built, unbuilt and network with a superimposed by a layer of ICT for these. So why, why do we need a smart city? There have been few pro statements and defenses as well as advocating from different platforms and different people that why do we need smart city? There is one handbook. I'll be referring to it later in my presentation. What it says that being smart is no more a choice. It is a need. So what we say that are we in a position to choose whether we should go for a smart city or not? It makes it very clear through handbook. No, it is no more a choice. It is a need. We will see certain benefits of it. Yes, there are certain hiccups. Yes, we will definitely um, have them because when the system transit from one type to another, there are certain initial issues as well as there are certain additional efforts which are required for break, breaking of ice. Now, quoting our PM, Narendra Modi ji. He said, let's join this mass movement. This is in context of smart city mission. Let's join this mass movement towards Swaraj. Now, Swaraj has multiple meanings in it. One is a state of welfare. The other is being inclusive. That is everybody. Everybody has a role and opportunity to present his or her views at different platforms. So just picking this particular term, Swaraj, which has been put forward through our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, that there has to be a mass movement. What is important is a mass movement, not a single project. So to realize this particular uh, thought of mass movement, Government of India floated a challenge 
government of India floated a challenge, which is India Smart Cities Challenge. It it is a competition. In fact, I can even call it was a competition. It's a it's a continuous activity and has been floated long back. It's a, it's a com competition for municipal leaders. Why municipal leaders? Because it has to be through local governments. It has to be through all execution process, conceptualizing, execution, monitoring, auditing, everything uh, or all these actions are the responsibilities of local government or municipal leaders. So it's a competition for municipal leaders along with their associates to promote economic opportunity, improve their governance. They floated the government of India floated a challenge and through this challenge initially there was selection of 20 are different cities. All these cities, they have to prepare their projects put in front of government so as to put their best in front of it. Why this? Your city should be selected for a smart city project. So all of most of the cities, they went for it. In the first phase, it was 20 cities which got selected and then later on it, it was 100 in numbers which are selected and all of them are passing through different phases of implementing this smart city actions. Now with smart city concept, as I have just now said, ICT, better governance, taking care of citizens, from where did it initiate it? It initiated from few of the concepts like right to city concept, just city concepts, limits to growth, carrying capacity, which has to talk something about natural resources and many more. So there are in standalone or tidbit uh, availability, we have some in silos, concepts like right to city, just city, etc., which which are instrumental and helped into conceptualizing of this particular concept of smart city. What few people have interpretation apart from the basic interpretation with which I have started our note of ICT, best better governance and taking into consideration the welfare of citizens. Now, our Prime Minister said that we, this smart city mission will help us to prepare our cities to take up the challenges, the future's challenges and, and to have world-class intelligence as part of the system, the city system. Similarly, the UK department, because smart city concept is not only in India. It's a concept which is there at most of the countries they have, and they have their own interpretation of how to follow this, that particular smart city option as well as what is the context of or what is this, their status uh, that requires the smart city to help them to reach to something where they want to reach. So I have picked few of them just to tell what type of frame or through different frames what our different agencies and countries are expecting from this concept of smart city. As we have uh, uh, seen that our country has one of uh, um, its thought as to prepare our cities for future. Now with uh, some UK department for business and innovation, it says that smart city is a process rather than a single outcome. That's why further in my presentation, you'll find that I have used, is it a project or a mission? Project has its life. 
during execution and even after it. But mission is the one that continues and stays. So this is what has uh, the prime point through. You get Department of Business. It says it's a process rather than a static outcome. It should have citizen getting engaged into decision making uh, system. There should be infrastructure which with supports the social system, uh, ample social capital, digital technology and livability, which is very important. Now social capital, uh, this is very important. Human resource, there is a lot of economics into a human resource. That's why a social capital should be given importance too. Now, livable as its uh, literal meaning gives an idea of uh, a situation or conditions where an individual or group of people find themselves comfortable. The comfortable has, uh, the term comfortable has a varied scale, but this represents uh, a basic one. And resilient, resilience is an important concept that should always go with sustainability. Through resilience, what we are expecting, if a particular city or a system is resilient, that means that particular system, what is the rate of that particular system to come back to the original? Like if there is flood in Hoshangabad. Now, because of flood in Hoshangabad, the total life gets uh, uh, disturbed, the economic activity gets disturbed. So, how soon the, these activities gets resumed is the rate of resilience. So, along with sustainability, resilience is uh, a very important aspect which should be incorporated in decision making. What it has come from uh, an international uh, telecommunication union is a innovative uh, city with ICTs, again emphasizing on improving the quality of life, efficiency, competitiveness. Now competitiveness makes uh, a particular organization, system, city to aspire for something more, something better to play, to put them uh, somewhere in a better position. So competitiveness is a one that keeps the system moving for better and then respecting economic, social and environmental aspects. Then smart cities, what OECD says that it is an initiative or approach that effectively that effectively leverages the digitization now from ICT very specifically the digitization is what OECD is expecting through this concept of smart city along with the same concern of well-being and something more than it is the collaborativeness some collectiveness, how to get the best of after making use of better from others. Now, as I have just now said, is it smart city? Is it a project or a mission? Yes, obviously a mission with its continuity and government of India has also floated smart city with the name of a mission why it has to be there first of all because city is a dynamic system now dynamism on almost all aspects starting from the demographic that is people number of people keep on changing the natural growth is there there is possibility of high mortality there is possibility of high birth rate there is possibility of lots of in migration there is possibility of lots of out migration so there are so many permutations and combinations possible within a city that has got impact on number of people 
That's why city is a dynamic system. So it's not only number of people. Now this number variation in number of people is the one that raises varied demands. Less people, less demand. Maybe economic, maybe uh, employment, maybe consumption. Everything is directly proportional to what the change in population is. That's why a smart city should be a journey, not a destination, because it, it, it should keep on moving. It should be an evolutionary system keeps, uh, uh, keeps on improving and providing the better as is required in that particular context. It should have an efficient resource management and service delivery. Now, this resource is again directly uh, related to or proportional to the dynamisms within the system. That's why it's a mission. It's a mission, not a project. And it should be taken in this spirit as a mission. Yes, I'm. I'm uh, getting somebody's uh, voice. Is there some issue in it? I'm not able to hear properly. What is the issue? Uh, Indrani, can you please check? Is there, is there any technical issue or there is somebody who has unmuted? Should I continue? Should I continue or is there any point somebody wants to have? A uh, professor Vivek and uh, uh, Professor Indrani, please uh, tell me. Vivek, yeah, big Indrani, you check uh, somebody's mic is on. Please, please request, please request everybody to mute themselves. Kindly mute your mics. All audiences requested to mute their mics. Some noise is coming from background. Okay, I'll, I'll continue. I think somebody. Uh, has uh, unmuted himself and is not able to hear what we are trying to make. Okay, so this as a mission uh, has got some commitments to do, has to take care of certain inequalities, some challenges which are coming as of now in terms of climate change, uh, certain uh, uh, global warming and other issues. And lastly, then some commitments or some expectations from industrial revolutions. Now this is now this is what leads us to three major commitments which are expected from a smart city. That is livability, economic ability, and sustainability. How can we understand? How can we understand that? Yes, we are achieving some aspects or improving upon livability or economic ability or sustainability. So uh, there are few indexes which I have mentioned. There are lot many indexes there in light. We have uh, sustainable development index sustainable. Uh, performance Power index, Kumar, governance index, ease of living index, and few more indexes which helps us to understand and audit whether we are moving towards the aspired roadmap or not. Now, this is what this is what through smart city has been formalized. They, they were there in a very scattered, in a very fractured uh, and in a very informal manner. So they are formalized and institutionalized. That is put as part of certain actions. This is 
very important point that has been covered under this particular smart city concept, right? Wherever you have, you, you'll find because of this. Now, what happens through this or what is expected through this uh, smart city mission in India is these three these three aspects which I have just now mentioned uh, of livability, economic ability and sustainability. Now through this, through this that they want to achieve livability, they want to achieve, they want to increase or improve upon economic capability of the set, uh, settlement and make, make the development sustainable. The point here I would just like to raise is because I have used few many times that there is a conflict between human system and natural system. Does it mean uh, and it has got effect and impact on the quality of environment, the quality of nature's natural system? Does it mean we should not go for development? Definitely not. It is how we try to achieve the balance between these two, the development and the environment. This balance has to be there through all, has to be the core concern of any development activity. And this is again also a major, major point of uh, objective or the basic uh, spirit that goes through smart city missions. There are few principles which I have taken from the website of smart city mission of Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. There is another website which is floated through National Institute of Urban Affairs that is NIUA. It has got smart net. It it is a very exhaustive, very informative website that has, that covers or that brings all those uh, different uh, projects which are going on and different decisions as well as different advisories which are floated from government. So I've picked, I've picked a few uh, principles, uh, uh, principles from that handbook. So citizens should be at the core there should be inclusiveness that is to uh, there should not be stratification there should not be social stratification that this is for this category of people and this is not for this category no so it has got inclusiveness more for less that is a minimalistic approach that is as less resources as possible. We should use it and optimize the benefits to the system. There should be cooperative and competitive federalism. This is very important. Uh, if there is a difference between if you do a work on your own or as per instructions, and secondly, if you do your work, and if you know it is going to be evaluated, definitely there is a difference between how you approach towards these uh, activities. So by launching Smart City Mission, the government has tried to get into a competitive federalism. We in India, have a federal system of working. Federal is we are divided into states, then districts and divisions and union territories. So we have a federal system. So when there is a competition between these uh, uh, different units, obviously it should be the best which an individual would like to present near it. That's why I said that I've taken a case of Bhopal, not because I am here from Bhopal, because Bhopal was one of the first 20 cities to be selected under smart city mission. There should be convergence, whatever has been thought should get transferred into actions. And 
technology should be uh, a facilitator, should help us to reach to certain goals. But as I started, there was a major glitch in today's uh, uh, be, uh, because of the technological glitch. There was uh, uh, I have requested to change the slot of today's presentation. So we do have certain limitations. We do have certain uh, issues to be handled, but this should not stop us from moving further now. That is a spirit. That is a challenge. We should move. It it might appear to be too far to catch, but unless and until we move on that path, it is not possible for us to catch it or to reach to that point. So these few principles, and this is how again this has been taken from the handbook, where they have a starting as what is a smart city. It's it's a very good flow chart where they have tried to put different activities and different expectations in um, in conjunction to each other, then why a smart city? This is why they think they should be a smart city and what are learnings and what is to be shared. Now these learnings and sharing of it for that government of India has floated another program within this smart city uh, mission is of sister cities. They have taken 20 top cities and they have taken 20 bottom cities out of this total 100 number of cities. And given the responsibility of mentoring to top uh, 20 cities. Now this is what is the, the they are expecting from share that is peer learning and peer supporting uh, system as part of it. And then finally a smart city plan. So as I have mentioned, there is much, much more than what I'm presenting in front of you on different platforms, but mainly two uh, websites which I have mentioned about the ministry and NIUA. Please do visit if you are more interested in it. Now, this making a city smart. They have a workbook, they have a handbook which has got few of excerpts from it. I have already mentioned in my earlier one. Now this is what is gives an idea of to what extent it is not building off a particular wall, but giving life to a wall such that such that a particular person who has some level of disability also finds himself or herself as part of the total system, not left over. Now, this is what is through inclusiveness, uh, what government or this mission is expecting. Now, as I've mentioned, lots of advisories also gets floated because there are so many cities and so many projects within a city which are being floated to make a particular city a smart city. So they uh, float different advisories as and when there it is required. So advisory number 16, uh, I've just now mentioned about sister cities. It is for speeding up of implementation of some uh, cities who are uh, just a bit lazy in uh, reaching to the targets or who are not able to meet the targets which are uh, already uh, defined for them. Right Now, after this, so many terms have come. It has to have contextuality. It has to be in context. Some desired in Bhopal might not work in Bhuvneshwar. So it has to take into care. Uh, it, has to, it has to take care of the contextuality. What is the need of a city? That is, how do you understand your city first? It is not the blanket decision that will work for all cities together. So each and every city 
is a project by itself. And within this project by itself, there are multiple projects which are going on. I'll, I'll uh, show you when I'll go through my case. There has to be flexibility to incorporate something even at present and in future. It has, it should be inclusive. It should have multiplicity, not a, a particular function for one activity. Should adapt to the requirements as it comes between because a decision for a city is, has a, a a temporal scale which is five years, 10 years, 15 years and so long. But if some some issue arises, uh, maybe within a year or some uh, somewhere in between. So the city should have the decisions should have a, a possibility of adaptability to include uh, whatever is the demand of time. It should be an efficient and game theory is a must. Game theory is that is you respond as your opponent's action. This is very important. So a city has to respond as the demand gets raised. So there has to be a coordination of few terms which I've tried to put them after so much of my uh, presentation. It could be like this from government side or from decision maker sides. There has to be an institution. There has to be a formal setup with exclusive decisions on roles and responsibilities of individual. Now, if it is, uh, the roles and responsibilities are decided, then an individual can be made accountable to, can make decisions on his or her own along with the team, and then it should be transparent. There is a document or a system which is in place in India through citizen charter. Now citizen charter is um, responsibility, uh, questioning of responsibility of an individual. That is if somebody is responsible for provision of, uh, of water to the taps of a specific uh, uh, colony, then that particular person is accountable for all that decision. Now this is, and it has got timelines also that within this period, it should be uh, fulfilled. Uh, that is the de decision should be taken. Then there should be coordination between these all, including transparency and accountability. Now, just to put them together, everything together is to understand the city, what a city is, that is demand based. What is the demand of it? What it can give as an input, how it can process that this is what understanding of the city is. Analyze what, what the demand is, how we can fulfill that is identifying of resources, including human resources, skills, technology, and everything therein, and how it can be managed from somewhere and could be put together. And finally, the product in form of act, how to plan, how to go for it. But there are always certain limitations because of diversities, because of certain variations. Now, the variations is in social structure. You have a, uh, a scale of literacy. You have a scale of um, employability. You have a scale of cultural background and different Again, a technological know-how is different. Some some lot may not be well equipped by using of those technology or technological platforms, and some might be very uh, tech savvy. The skills, the incentives, the certain skills require certain incentives. To why should somebody uh, switch from conventional system to digital or more? developed system there. And lastly, very important, there is a fund crisis, right? And funds availability need not be crisis always, but funds availability. And you have to take care of 
even a circular economy. The circular economy that is economy which is designed to take care of latest dimensions like climate change, energy requirement and like that. Now the gaps is these gaps are to be addressed and this is what when you will get into execution phase, you will find that how to address these gaps. There is a disturbance for a period of execution. That is during the period when the project gets executed, there is lots of disturbance. Now that disturbance, that disturbance creates, that disturbance creates temporary urbanism. Now what is this temporary urbanism as? When I go through the case, I'll show that because of, because of execution of these smart projects or for that matter, any project, what happens? Now that by itself is a one settlement on its own. Now that settlement on its own is what we call it as temporary urbanism. Secondly, we have already available utilities. That is, there is a water supply system in place. There is a sewer system in place. There is telecommunication lines and lot many underground cabling which has happened. When you overlay, when you overlay your smart city project, if it is ignored, already existing layer is ignored, then there is a major issue. Now, what is the major issue of disturbance uh, getting uh, uh, created for the downward uh, system as well as the system which is the utilities which are already available. You are ignoring it and deciding and designing for a complete system as a new. This is waste of resource. This is waste of uh, financial resource, uh, the physical resource and the human resource in terms of again or in fact repeating the same process which you could have partially made use of it. This is a gap which is there. Then I have just now mentioned a circular economy. It's not only money. It's not only money in terms of public goods like schools, hospitals, roads, etc. No, there is another dimension which has uh, which has to be taken care of majorly it's uh, climate change and the events resulting out of climate change activity. One small example which is very relevant in this uh, uh, discussion is Conventionally, the cyclones in India used to come from Bay of Bengal. And this is what the natural system is because of all temperature and the currents and the system getting built up. But in last one year, we have seen lots of cyclones, not only lots of cyclones, but aggressive cyclones co coming from the other side of Arabian Sea. Now, this is a result of some changes in the total system that gets built or a total responsible system that uh, creates the cyclone. Maybe the temperature of water and the total cycle that gets built. Now, what is it? Who is going to take care of it? The coastal part, the coastal part, that is the western coastal part, because of not experiencing it earlier were never ever ready to bear it. Now it has to be ad hoc mechanism through our disaster management teams. 
which are taking care of it. But it cannot be ad hoc every time. We have to be prepared for all these changes, extremities, which is there. This is what we call as internalization of externalities. There are certain externalities which are developing. If, if the city plan or decision making gives you a scope of flexibility, then you can dovetail, then you can dovetail the decisions which are required to address to these immediate concerns or some concerns which were conventionally not part of it. Now, this is what for that funds are also required. So the, that is in decision making, there should be a scope of flexibility. There should be a circular economic con concern or economy to take care of these. So these are these are few, few of very practical, very practical concerns and issues which otherwise if taken care of through the smart city projects, then we definitely will have a very wonderful result out of it. If not, if not, then you will we will have lots of losses in terms of economic losses in terms of uh, some losses of infrastructure, built environment, and the social losses in terms of lives, the, the biotic part of the system. So this, these should be taken care of, which out of so many cases which I have studied, I have not got reflection of comprehensively taking care of it. Yes, there are examples which have tried to take into consideration few of this. Then along with smart cities, we do have government program of smart villages. Because a you can contain city or village with administrative boundary, but you cannot stop the flows. You cannot stop people moving from one place to other and similarly all changes required because of that which I have just now discussed with dynamism of cities. Now if if that is so, how can we how can we connect this to how can we take benefits of smart villages or we we have got urban mission urban mission is pandit deen dayal urban mission that is for upliftment of cluster of few identified cluster of few villages now a single village may not be in a position uh, to uh, use the services uh, provided and generate revenue. But if there is clustering of villages, then it will be an agglomeration of village that, where there will be optimization of use of resources. So we do have different programs running uh, by government of India, which can reinforce this, which can support this smart city mission are they being taken care of? I think gap on this account is still there. And on this last year, uh, there, there was a decision and then it was floated by 15th Finance Commission last few years that there will be few uh, new cities. Uh, and to be very precise, it was announced as eight new cities. So how do we handle it? How do we handle it? Are we capable of handling it? I think yes, we are. There should be an always an optimistic approach of how to handle it and how best we can get out of it. Yes. Delhi Abidur had it appears that yes, the target is far off, but still it is approachable. Now, with this, with this, I'll, I'll just uh, have 
one small uh, video. Before I start, I start with uh, my project. This is a video of Bhopal Smart City proposal.
yes. This is, I just wanted to connect all of you with how, what have been decided on the papers. They are expecting to transfer, how they are expecting it to transfer on ground realities. So let me just go, make you run through this reality check, how it is realizing on the ground. Now this is a particular expectation through smart city of connecting all those ex expectations, all those expectations through ICT or smarter way of working. Now smart is actually action oriented. Being smart is, which is efficient, which gives better results, which is more successful. Right, so all actions which leads to optimization of resources and possibility of fulfilling what is targeted is the smart way of doing it. So we have smart, you, you have smart grids, energy, smart transportation systems, smart buildings, uh, smart health and digital uh, citizens are. This you have got reflection of all these, how the local government plans to transfer it on the ground. Now this uh, proposal, it was with the vision of transforming Bhopal, which is a city of lakes, tradition, it has a very rich tradition and heritage into a destination for smart connected connection is always what they aspire for and eco-friendly communities focused on education, research, entrepreneurship and tourism. So this was the vision of uh, formulation of this project to uh, make the uh, communities move towards a higher level of education, research, extend, extend them more opportunity of entrepreneurship, uh, increase the potential or uh, bank on the potential, improve upon the potential of tourism, which is captured in uh, the natural resources of uh, Bhopal. Now this is where they have tried to connect it to the contextuality. So the one area which was earlier identified for area-based development. Smart city has two concepts, has many concepts, but out of two, uh, out of so many, the two are there. One is ABD, other is PAN. Now ABD is area-based uh, development where it is expected that if that particular area is improved upon or has got better facility, it will have a pan impact on the larger areas. Right. So it was initially the Shiva, Shivaji Nagar because and then later on because of certain resistance from um, multiple sectors, it, it got shifted to uh, the site which uh, you have just now seen and I'll be showing it on the map. So it, it has got lots of uh, solutions which are ICT based for infrastructures and less of hiccups. Now this is the area, this is the area that has been chosen for different type of uh, projects, 98 to be precisely, as committed therein. That's why I've said that smart city project is a bouquet of projects. It's not a single project. So you have different projects. Now the challenge is whether to keep, uh, how to connect them. Connect does not mean physically connecting by roads. Connect is how to optimize benefits 
of an individual project from the other project. And one issue which I have just now mentioned as what will happen to utilities which are already existing because prior to smart city, whole Bhopal was working with different utilities of water supply, sewer, and many more. So by coming up of this project, if it if they are ignored, then it is an issue economically and technically also because the lines which are already running, what to do with them? They will be they will result in um, environmental disasters. It will result in geological disasters later on. I'll, I'll, I have certain pictures during, I have selected one project out of these uh, few projects uh, just to uh, give a reflection upon how how the system gets disturbed during the total span of execution of these projects. So it has been uh, nicely uh, identified sites for different purposes that has got a huge amount of tuning to some uh, 7000 crores there in then a few of uh, uh, these projects where works are completed so uh, you have multiple projects of 98 plus 57 plus 90 plus xyz it's it's not uh, a complete figure uh, there are projects which uh, are getting added to it at different stages. Some are uh, work order stage, some works are completed, some tenders are. So you have different stages of projects which are going on. So what is happening in reality? Let's have now this. This is uh, one position of uh, Bhopal or rank of Bhopal uh, under this uh, uh, particular how different capitals when it was evaluated, different capitals were evaluated under different heads of ease of living. How good somebody uh, can work and earn here, quality of life, economic ability. These are different attributes on which certain studies were conducted. These, these particular indexes again have uh, some indicators to support this. So it's a complete exercise by itself. But I'm just uh, trying to uh, give this information to give uh, you the idea where Bhopal stands. It has issues with uh, the economic ability. It is uh, good with the uh, citizens perception survey, which has got individuality and an individual giving importance to different aspects. So uh, had this been they are given importance in the or given prime importance in smart city, the result would have been good. I don't know whether it has been primarily taken into consideration or not, but by itself, these products, uh, these particular projects are instrumental in creating some employability or economic activities uh, within Bhopal. That is good. So. This is one of the platform which I have picked where they have tried to go for using ICT. They have tried to provide a platform to a user or a user friendly uh, platform to all end users. So this is IT where they are trying to gradually introduce to transportation system and this type of some format is there which can be accessed through any basic mobile having Wi-Fi wi connectivity. Now if that is so, this is what I was trying to address through creating temporary urbanism. When we have that huge scale or set of 7000 plus crores of projects still to come and then some uh, 4000 and 6000 crores huge amount and the scale of projects again very huge so you will require lot many persons to come and execute it when that is so it gives though it gives it's a positive one though it's it gives opportunity for lots of people to migrate uh, 
and have their employability and earn their livings there in. But how do they settle themselves? Now this is how they create their temporary life, maybe for a few years. Now maybe for a few years they have their kitchens, they have their uh, water, other uh, daily activities. They have some provisions to fulfill their demand. And then these are few old structures which are already there. The day when they were evacuated, they were in a functional state. When they were there in a functional state, that means there was working, working water supply line, sewer line, uh, tele lines, telephone lines, and whatnot. With an independent project, with an independent project coming somewhere here, how has the system used those utility lines? I could not find any, right? So this, the lines which were already there, maybe water supply lines will get eroded and will not be of major concern. I am not very sure technically might be they, they have some concerns of certain gases or certain material getting eroded and creating some geological disturbances there. But sewer by itself definitely is a bomb because the sewer which was stopped in between will remain there and had remained there. It will get into all bacterial activity and anaerobic, aerobic, all activities, creating multiple gases, creating, um, finally impacting the environment and geological disturbances, as well as this temporary urbanism, creating furthermore issues therein. The project which is coming therein is new, but the fabric was, urban fabric was already existing. So I think this is a major gap which should also be incorporated, incorporated why designing of project. Now this is what is called as I was calling as internalizations of externalities. Though these are not directly having impact on some structure like this, which is coming and has come up. But during this total process of, or the total life cycle of this uh, uh, smart city project should be taken as an overlaid layer on the existing fabric and all those externalities which will practically come in should be internalized and should be used. There should be use of present utility and resources. There should be provisions for a huge number of workers which are there. It's a mass uh, project. It's a major project, so you will have mass people coming to this. How how will you have till how much time you can get into an ad hoc provisions of septic tanks, water getting accumulating and some issues like this. Over and above this, within this uh, a very, very uh, critical and crucial period of pandemic, how do you handle it? How do you ensure safety of people, safety of somewhere else people are staying, not near, uh, somewhere near visited, vicinity, but somewhere else. If they are doing, if they are staying, they are definitely staying. How will you take care of it? So all these types of externalities, though the result will be good, but what will happen during this total process should also be incorporated within the total life cycle of it. There are lots of uh, uh, traffic movement on it, which gets uh, abrupted, which creates problem till, till we get something which makes us happy as the end product is there. But in between, yes, lots of lots of uh, adaptive governance, adaptive decisions, ad hoc decisions should be taken so as not to let these types of situations to come up and 
having an impact on social system, natural system, that should be definitely a one major point that should be taken care of. Now, if that is so, should we, should we stop? No, there are certain issues like this, this, this. No, definitely not. The end product is something this. Using all those which you have enjoyed during viewing that video. Yes, most of the projects, they are coming up and are functional here in a point of connectivity, optimization of results from these uh, particular individual results supporting each other should be part of governance decisions making making their end. Now what world is heading to? There are so many concepts and then there are so many uh, approaches which people they have followed and taking care of even further more than this. I have just selected one, which is an example of Wuven City. Wuven is Buni uh, Hui, interconnected. Now that is what the Japanese has given name it to, the city that built for happiness. There are lots of solutions, but it will be world's first programmable city. And that makes it one of the uh, aspiring uh, possibility. We should look forward to that. We should not sit and keep, are ye to hai we have lots of population. Yes, there are so many challenges. There is no deny on it, but unless and until we move further, how will we know that there are roses or there is a valley? We have to move on it and this is what a systems requirement is. So what is that woven city as? It, it will be environmentally symbolic uh, symbolities in that city. It will be transit oriented development. It should it will be um, having all provisions to make it disaster resilient. It is very important for any activity in Japan because of its being very seismic. It's, it's on a high seismic zone. Lots of seismic uh, activities happen from a range of small to a huge one. So all those development which they have definitely should be a resilient city along with the sustainability which they have. So this, these are three pillars of that woven city. It is also called a super city therein. So with the, all these connectivity, which I understand makes everybody understand that as much as possible, it is technology driven system. It is skill based system. So it is there is a difference between smart city and super city. Smart city is mainly a data driven, has got uh, to do lots of work with information which is uh, available there or should be available. With a super city, it, it develops its uh, own uh, across the disciplines data linkage platform and it is there on a click. Let's let's aspire for something which is higher. Then only we will be able to very smoothly pass this patch, which otherwise we might look as rough as of now. So it's a long term project with multiple short term targets there in. I'm sure I'm sure I'm able to induce in you all that it's a very aspiring. It's uh, it has lots of potential. It's only a mindset. It's only efforts from grassroots that we as individuals should come together for being selfish for everybody. Again, a journey of thousand miles 
it begins with a single step. Now, thank you so much for listening to me and giving me this opportunity to bring in front of you all those faces of this very ambitious and flagship program of Government of India. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. So thank you, ma'am, for this uh, informative session. And you rightly focused on the topic and explained it with great expertise. So now moving forward, I request all the participants to join the discussion. They can ask questions uh, by raising their hands or they can post the questions in a WhatsApp group. Uh, participants can uh, ask question. Uh, I request participants to uh, ask the questions. You can raise hands and unmute yourself and ask the question, or you can even post the question in a WhatsApp group. So uh, I don't see any question in WhatsApp group and uh, neither uh, participants uh, did not uh, raise their hands. So we come to the end of this session. So before we come Hi. into this yes, uh, uh, technical session, I'm, I'm thankful to all the participants and I trust I'm able to induce a sense of ownership uh, in the participants for their city, for their place, and request each and everybody to contribute as an individual or as a group for the benefits which is going back and which is going back to come back to you as a benefit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you to, to uh, a lot of thank you to organizers as well. Thank you. Welcome, madam. Thank you. Pleasure is mine, sir. Pleasure. Is very, mine. very informative presentation you presented. And uh, new dimension, new paradigm of uh, cities that uh, we could explore through your lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Before I say bye to everybody, uh, let, let me just uh, give a handful of thanks to organizers for organizing such a comprehensive. I went through uh, 
the total schedule. In fact, I'm very, very interested in tomorrow's morning, morning slots of happiness and yoga. So I, I understand the level of efforts organizers have tried to put to bring all strands together and to extend that bouquet to all the participants. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Indrani, Thank you, you can close. Yes, sir. Uh, should I leave? Should I leave the platform? Just, just, just one minute. Should I leave the platform? Just, just, just one minute. Just, just one minute. Okay. Just one minute. No, no. Minute. I, because from two, you have another schedule. That's why. Yes. Yes, yes sir. That's why. Yes, sir. So, yes. So I want to extend my generous thanks to Dr. Alka Bhagat, ma'am, and I want to thank her for her valuable time from her busy schedule to grace this occasion and I want to thank her uh, for sharing her uh, graceful opinion with us. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Take care and God bless everybody. Thank you. Ma Be safe thank and you. healthy. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Indrani. Yes, sir. So we can have five minutes break and then uh, we can continue with the next session. Anna? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, five minutes break and then you can talk to them and talk to them. Okay, sir. Oh. All right. So, so unko naya we will have... Yes, sir. I have shared the link. Sir. Uh, break and then talk to them, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Okay.
उनका मेल के हेलो 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 कैन यू प्लीज शेयर आवर प्रेजेंटेशन सो दैट आई हैव जॉइंट फ्रॉम द मोबाइल नाउ बिकॉज लैपटॉप इज नॉट सपोर्टेड एंड आई डू नॉट नो ओके सर दिस इज चिन्मय हरकरे ओके 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 सो I, I am asking Indrani to share the presentation. Okay. Yes. Yes. Indrani. Indrani. हेलो इंद्राणी
सर वी आर ऑडिबल एंड एवरीथिंग इज ओके फ्रॉम आवर साइड ना हेलो स्क्रीन actually na i am also sitting in the college and uh, network is problem <laughs> that is the thing we have a sm- uh, strong network here but uh, the microsoft team on mobile on mobile it is opening in laptop there is a problem oh, so you can you can share with the mobile no problem we will this link can be accessed to mobile even to share the in 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 the mobile there is no option to scre- share the screen or video and audio are both okay the problem is screen sharing If anyone can do that, we are good to go.
सर कैन यू हियर एस ओके yeah you oh. are presenter okay now i should be able to share my content okay 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 we okay. are making this yes sir nice